Hello, my name is Sarah Maslin and I'm a software developer at Oracle working on the Oracle Content Management Headless Samples. Today I'm going to show you how to build a block application in Vue using Oracle Content Management as a headless CMS. The first thing we're going to want to do is clone this public repository. This is the universal Vue blog sample that is already hooked up to Oracle Content Management. The code on GitHub is available for you to contribute to and give feedback on. So let's clone this repository. You can use any editor or IDE of your choice to edit this sample. I use Visio Studio Code. The first thing we're going to want to do is install all the dependencies. So let's run npm install. This can take quite a while. This sample project was created using our Views command line interface, and their website contains full documentation on how to use this tool. We're using Vue version 3, which added server-side rendering support, and their website clearly explains how to add server-side rendering to your Vue 3 project created with the Vue command line interface. We are also using Vuex in the project, which is a state management library. I will not be going into details of this library and the documentation on their website is really good. So let's look at the project. We have a public directory which contains public assets. The source folder contains all the project code and I'll come back to that later. The package.json is a typical Node.js file where it contains all the dependencies for the project along with some scripts you're going to want to use to build and run the application. The viewconfig.js file is where you can extend the bundling if you need to. The .env file is where we contain the URL of the server and the token of the channel in which all the assets have been published to. It is considered best practice to use an EMV file to contain sensitive data for your application and not check it into source control. Therefore, when you use this sample for your own purposes, you'll most likely want to take this file out of your source control. Now the dependencies have been installed, well, let's build the project. The build will fail unless there are lint, if the build will fail if there's any lint errors. So let's run the linter with the fix mode to ensure there's no errors. And then once that's run, let's run npm run build. This will create a dist directory in your project first building the client bundle and then the server bundle. So you can see that under the disk directory, we have the client that's been built and it's now building the server. So now that we both have the client and server built, let's run the application using npm run start. Here you can see the URL of the running server. Let's open that up in a browser and you'll be able to see the application running. Here is our home page. It contains a company logo, a company name, a couple of links also contains a list of topics. On clicking a topic, you're taken to the articles list page, listing those articles for the selected topic. If you click on a particular article, 
you get to see the article details, including its author and its content. And the breadcrumbs enable you to go back up through the application. All of the data for this sample is coming from Oracle Content Management. We have an asset type defined for this home page. We also have an asset type defined for topics and articles and the author for an article. We then have assets created of those asset types and they're published to a channel so we're available in our sample. Let's go and look at the actual code for our project. So the main code is under the source folder. Let's highlight the scripts folder first. This is where we have all the code that gets the data from the content server. Oracle Content Management makes available a content SDK for anyone who wants to build a headless application in a framework such as Vue, Angular, React, etc. You can see here at the top, we're importing the methods that we want from the content server, content SDK. At the bottom of this file is where we create our client for the contents SDK, and we're using values from the env file. The services file contains all the functions to get the data from the content management using the client created in the server config utils file. I'll highlight a couple of methods. The fetch homepage is to used to get all the data for the homepage. It uses the content SDK client and it queries the content management for any asset type of OCE getting started homepage and with the name of homepage. Once we have that item, we pull out a few pieces of data, including the list of topic IDs. For each of those topic IDs, we then make a further request to the content SDK to get the item with the specified topic ID. The fetch topic articles function is used to get all the data for the second page, the articles list page. And this uses the content SDK again to query the content management system for any asset type of OC getting started article, which has the topic ID of the one we're trying to get the data for. The fetch article details function gets all the details for the third page, the article details page. And you can see that we're just using the content SDK client to get the item with a specified article ID. We also make calls to content SDK to get URLs for some of the images we're displaying. The other file under scripts is this utils file, which is just a, contains a bunch of utilities. The router file contains all the routes for the application. You can see here that the home page has a static route and it's rendered by the topics list page component. Both the articles list page and the articles details page have dynamic URLs as they have the IDs on the URL. The articles list page is rendered using the articles list page component and the article details page is rendered using the articles details page component. We use Vuex as a store and this is where we make all the calls to the services file to get the data. The Vuex store calls the services, which in turn gets the data from Oracle Content Management and stores that data in its store. It then makes the data available to the components. The components in our project is split into two types. The top level components for each page is under pages and under components are those that are reusable components. Those under pages are the ones responsible for getting the data and those under components were the ones that re receive data only. Let's look at the topics list page component. This is used to render the home page. You can see here at the top is the view markup for the page. We have, we're using the header component and we're passing all the data that we need into that header component. For each of the topics to be displayed on the home page, we're using the topics list item component, passing in the actual topic that we want to, it to render. Below the markup is the JavaScript code for the component. You can see we're importing 
the components that were used in the markup. The computed properties are used in the markup. So if you see here topics list page property, you can see it's being used in the markup here when it's sending data to the header component. The computed properties get their values from the Vuex store. Whenever the store updates their values, i.e. it's got the data back from content management, the computed properties will update and therefore our UI will also update. The server prefetch method is only called during server side rendering and it calls through to the local method fetch data. This will dispatch a, a call to the Vuex store asking it to get all the data for this page. The last method in this component is mounted. This is only called on the client side. It checks to see if it's got any data and if it hasn't, it will load that data. The other pages are written in exactly the same way. So the articles list page is for the second page. You can see the markup and then it's JavaScript below. And the same for the article details page. Looking at one of the reusable components, the header, for example, you can see we've got the markup at the top here, but you can see that there is no logic. All the data is passed into these components. The app.view and the app.js are just standard Vue.js files that are created when you run the Vue CLI command. The last files in these folders in this project are the client and server folders. The client fo file folder contains the entry point when it's running on the browser, and the server file contains the code for the entry point when it's running on the server. If we scroll down to the main GET request, you can see here what is happening when the app is requested. So a request comes into the server and the view server code will call, figure out which route is being used and which components are needed for that route. It then calls the server prefetch method for each of those components and gets all the HTML markup for those components. It renders all the markup into a single string and it also serializes out the Vuex store and puts all of that data in the HTML content that is returned to the client. The client then receives this HTML content. It takes the serialized Vuex data and imports it into a client-side Vuex store and then renders the HTML. It also then adds any client-side JavaScript such as on-click handling. When a user clicks on a link, such as they clicked on a topic in the home page, the client will then render the next page. As the client is rendering the next page, it hasn't been server rendered. So this is where the components mounted method will go and get the data from Oracle Content Management. The Oracle Content Management documentation contains a tutorial going through the same as what I've gone in here. It contains full details of the data that is needed for this sample, along with the code and how to run it. The documentation also contains links to other tutorials we have written, such as an image gallery written in React or minimal site written in React, as well as those other samples written in Vue. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it.